I watch and review one Detective Conan movie a week until the release of the brand new film in April 2024. I'll tell you what the movie is about, the good, the bad, and anything else interesting of note. And at the end of each video, I rank the movies watched in the tier list to see exactly which films are the best in the series. And today we go Van Gogh with the 19th film Detective Conan Sunflowers of Inferno. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Sunflowers of Inferno premiered in Japanese theaters on April 18, 2015 and was directed by Kobun Shizuno and written by Takeharu Sakurai. Oh. Oh no. The movie follows Conan trying to protect the famous sunflower paintings by Vincent van Gogh from being stolen by the uncharacteristically violent phantom thief Kaito Kin. In Conan's quest to thwart Kid's plans, he finds that there may be more to these heists than meets the eye. I had an interesting experience with this film. On a first viewing, the film felt kinda good. It was exciting, the mystery was fine, nothing too special. I was gonna give it like the bottom of B and call it a day. And then I viewed it a second second time and oh boy does this not hold up. The only things that do hold up admittedly are firstly the Kaito Kid heists in the first half of the film, beautifully animated, exhilarating action and music. The set pieces were amazing and these scenes were just really well done. And secondly, the allure of the Van Gogh name does add that layer of weight when it comes to these items being portrayed on screen. When these paintings get thrown around, burnt, put through fire, you really do wince a little bit because you think about oh my god these are legendary priceless paintings handle them gently please i can't remember that we had a macguffin that held this much weight and allure since the russian crystal egg in the third film last wizard of the century ironically also a kaito kid film and now on to the actual mystery itself this was what didn't hold up for me on a second viewing the culprit's motivation just felt so weak wanting to commit all these heinous crimes acts of terrorism putting countless lives at risk just because you think one of the paintings is fake and you don't like seeing it displayed with the rest? Get the fuck out of here, go and touch some grass or something, get a life as well. Also this reveal about Azuma Koji killing his brother over the painting literally comes out of nowhere. Azuma was not even considered a suspect until literally a few seconds before he reveals his story. It felt really forced and rushed just to give the audience one red herring to steer away from Natsumi, the actual culprit. This was so poorly done and is probably why my second viewing of this was tarnished knowing that the film will either A go nowhere or B go somewhere stupid. I just got bored by the end. The action in the last act also doesn't even compare to anything in the first half. I do also have to mention the movie breaks some storytelling rules a couple of times in the movie. According to Van Dyne's 20 rules of mystery writing, one of his rules is that the reader must have equal opportunity with the detective for solving the mystery. The movie breaks this rule by showing flashbacks to an incident that Conan, Haibara, or anyone of importance solving the case should not have access to. Like whose perspective are we supposed to see this scene from? The, the old lady? But she has nothing to do with Conan or solving the case. Anyway, fun fact, apparently eagle-eyed viewers may actually have been able to deduce the culprit's identity even before her eventual downfall. During this scene where the shadowy figure is setting the electrical room ablaze, the figure's earpiece is worn on the left ear with the only person on the entire cast wearing wearing it the same way being Natsumi herself. So there you go, this was actually a good reward for sharp eyed viewers unlike the reward in the previous film dimensional sniper. Um, overall, good eye candy all around but very shallow everywhere else. It had a good setup but this movie just unfortunately unravels itself as it keeps going. That's two stinkers this duo has made now. Come on boys, maybe it's just not meant to be. Just change it up and find another partner. This movie is going into the D tier. I'll see y'all next week for movie 20, Detective Conan, The Darkest Nightmare. Take care everyone, bye bye.